I'm done. Okay, here's a quick lesson storing with dry ice. I got five gallon buckets from uh, Home Depot, pretty under five dollars. It's just a little over four with tax. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to put some on the bottom. Mutt and glove, and here's some dry ice. Got way more than I need, I believe, but that's so if I something happens and I don't get it done in time. There's 10 pounds, I don't need that much, about a quarter of a pound per bucket would be just suffice. So I'm going to put it back, and I put it in here. I'm going to have to fit, kind of estimate. Now I can fixate myself, put my head in there, and not worry about being prepared. I would just uh, kill myself. I wouldn't have to worry, would I? Okay. So, I make a mess. That's why I have these gloves on. Very coats and things. And I, 40 years ago, I first time I ever done this. And there's so many different ways people tell you how to. Some say put it on top. Now this is way more than I need, probably, but this will work. I put it in aluminum foil like that. That way. There. And then I'm just going to put another little piece over that. And it will evaporate. I don't care if a little few beans touch it or anything. I don't think it really matters. They say use paper. Okay, and we fill up the beans. because it's cheaper to go to the grain ring and the amount I want. Uh, I first time I've done it's 40 years ago and I hid some out in a stump out in the woods. It's probably still out there if nobody's ever found it. And I fed a lot to the chickens so I ran out of wheat. So I have to do it again. Sid, get out of the pitcher. I know the bag gets in the way of your view. I hope you don't mind. I'll see how much wheat we can get in two of these. If I can get it all, or am I going to have to? Uh, so that looks like I got, maybe we'll get three bags in. I need it open for right now. I'll put the last in in the very end. So as you can see, I'm not going to even waste my time package uh, one more bag. You get the idea. Okay, now we're going to do uh, probably only 75 pounds of long rice. Okay, rice is in there. Put some dry ice in. It's getting dark and I have to use up this dry ice and I have 150 pounds of oak cut steel steel cut mix or whatever you want to call it 
steel cut uh, oh, some of the best oatmeal you can make is out of that stuff. Okay, let's just, okay, here's some more stuff. Sushi rice. I got 10 pounds of that. I think I'm going to put this in the bucket and then fill it around with some other rice. Actually, I'm trying to figure a way to pack the stuff the best way I can. That'd be, hey, this would be something special. So maybe later on in life, after things all gone, there'll still be fish or something. We can make sushi and our seaweed, etc. So there's going to be two types of rice in this bucket over here. fill it around with the other rice. I'll cover that over and when they open it up, ah, we can have two types of rice. So that should do it. I'll put a little bit more dry ice in each one of these buckets. I got enough to calculate, put a little bit on top, so then we can they can go back both direction, upwards from the bottom, down from the top. Well, you see me put the dry ice in the other ones. This one here, and, but I didn't show you how I seal them. So I take this drill. When I, I put this on before I put the, after I put the dry ice on, I want to seal, and I'll put it down, and I'll show you here. Get this bucket in here. Kind of like that. Then I'll put the seal on, knock it down, and then I'll shove down. But first, I'm going to do, put a seal it in here. be like so. Get the lid down. Pound it down good. Not too hard. You don't want to break anything. It helps to get that lid down by giving a little taps. At least I think it does. Maybe I'm wrong. But do what you want to do that seems the best way for you. So you might put the tops on, let it sit all night long so all the carbon dioxide comes out. Then I take some really heavy duty stuff, kind of like this stuff, it's a little thicker. And I'll put a little bit right here on the side of this hole. And I'm going to fill it in with this stuff. I get enough there. Let it sit dry a little bit so it's a little more funky. I mean, it's a little thicker. There's some more of the stuff that oozed out while I was doing it. And then what I do is, I take my hand, force the air out, like so. And then I'll put that over it. It should be thick enough. It doesn't, this stuff is thick enough. I generally don't have to let it dry. It does. You can just poke another little hole in that and do it again if it sucks it in and you just let it dry longer. Okay, now if I let go, it should keep it down. It should not pop up. And if it pops up, you'll see that it won't have that little concave. And it's going to look like kind of like these canned food. And here, here's some like canned tomatoes. And the top, if you ever can before, you'll know that as it cools, it sucks the top close and makes a seal. Well, this is the same idea, that it doesn't suck it out. You force it out by pushing down on it. And you'll know if it's sealed good if it doesn't lift up. So, that's how I seal it.
And then we'll, I'll show you a trick with a candle maybe you could use. Okay, it's dark. We've been out for quite a while. And we have 18 five gallon pails full of grain, beans, rice, steel cut oats, and a little bit of old oats. It's at least 500 pounds. 